Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're back in the last one, if you do recall. Deku was an idiot, but that's not new. Here we go! Dot, dot, dot. Oh, you know we're starting strong when it starts with a good dot, dot, dot. Kachan meets my gaze, his ruby red eyes, meh. You also know what's a good one when we can't read in the first sentence. Kachan meets my gaze, his ruby red eyes, more mesmerizing than the sunset behind me. Deku, you're a poet. Yeah, I do like you. <gasps> oh my god, it's the first 15 seconds. Then... But so what? I still hate you. Uh, Kachan's words, however, aren't quite as warm as the sunset. <laughs> this is too much. My feelings for you have absolutely nothing to do with what you've done. You can nag me all you want, but this will never change. I already told you. I never wanted your help. Stop acting so arrogant, Deku. <laughs> Is that technically a swear word? What? I never. Deku, how long have we known each other? How long? We've been together since childhood for all these years, ever since I could remember. That's right. So you can't lie to me. He points in front of us at our reflection in the glass wall. <laughs> Take a good look at what kind of face you're making right now. I'm... <laughs> my words won't come out. Kachan's cold remarks ring beside my slightly upturned lips. The useless Deku from long ago would never take this kind of expression. I mean, make. I can't read, so I've decided a long time ago. I need to hate you more than I like you. Now that's just silly. Boy, you silly. You know what it sounds like? It sounds like he's hangry. And you know what we need to give him when he's hangry? Some fiber, did you know? Mini wheats are a great source of fiber. I feel the figure f f f f I feel the figure besides me disappear. His shadow grows longer and longer. These colors, once within arm's reach, are now fading away. Okay, Pocahontas. And my outstretched hand closes around thin air. Nothing at all. This is getting really emo. I can't handle it. That's a lot of black space. Hello? <laughs> I'm back. Uh-oh, uh-oh, please tell me his mom's not about to start talking. I forgot what her voice is. Not waiting for Kachan to finish his checkup, I went home. I think I need some time to cool down. Kachan will only get mad if I stick around to blab on. Okay. <laughs> I feel a strong sense of rejection coming off him. It shows not only through how irked he is in my transformation, but also how isolated I feel when I'm with him. I couldn't say anything. Not a single reply surfaced in my mind as I watched Kachan get up and leave. Kachan likes me, but at the same time, he hates me. Hangry. A hangry boy. Deku, you know what you gotta do. I know what you gotta do. Everyone here knows what you gotta do. I slide to the floor, burying my head in my knees. What on earth does that mean? You can't have a mental breakdown at the front door. At least go up to your room. Is it impossible for you to simply let me? I stay like that for a while, wishing I could just melt away into the ground. Finally getting up and taking on my shoes, I realize the house is silent. <gasps> No one answered me. Mom! Mom! <laughs> oh, she kidnapped. The living room lights are on. I take a few steps in to find no one inside. Standing in the doorway, panicking a little, I see a note on the table. <gasps> a note? Are you having an affair with Kajan? Recognizing Mom's handwriting, it hits me. Right, Mom said she was going to travel with her friends for a few days. What? She just left this little boy home alone? What am I going to do? I just talked about in the last one how I almost burned the house down making that bento box. <laughs> I was thinking about Kachan so much that I forgot Mom's reminder. The note says that since there wasn't enough time for her to make me dinner, I need to remember to eat. Reading it, I feel ashamed at how incompetent I am. Mom worries about me so much, yet I... Huh? There's something else written here. Wait, what? Go to Kachan's house for dinner, I can sense it! Clearly written on the note is, I've already talked to Mitsuki-san. You'll be staying at their house long <laughs> Ooh, I called it! I feel a little more reassured leaving you in Katsuki-kun's hands. Oh, you can leave me in his hands, all right. This, I'm dead. <laughs> oh, oh, I know I told you guys to buckle up in the last one, but this time I mean it, y'all better buckle up, because it's going to get spicy up in here. This letter was written with so much care and love, but my heart goes cold from reading it. Why now? I bury my head in my hands and pace around the room. Now what? What am I going to do? Oh, you know what you're going to do. You're going to go over there <laughs> with some snacks. Tell the truth. I thought I could run from him until at least the end of the day, but I can't cook, and Mom doesn't know what happened between me and Kachan. It wasn't her fault for asking Bakugo. It's my own. See, the, the bento box thing was a setup. I knew it. No, I didn't. <laughs> It was foreshadowing. Huh? Wait a second. 
Mom said she already talked to Bakugo, which means... He knew! <gasps> Even when we were at the hospital, Kachan already knew I was gonna come over. And if I recall correctly, Mom is going with Kachan's parents, which means... Oh, come on! That's not how this works. No! Two separate parental units aren't gonna go somewhere and leave their high schoolers to just wreak havoc on the home. <laughs> I call shenanigans. No, no, no! This is a recipe for disaster. See, even he knows. Even he knows. I need to find an excuse not to go, but I still need to contact him. Would he pick up if I called, or should I use line? What does that mean? Thinking about Kachan turns my brain into a war zone. As I fret over my own safety, I fail to notice what's by my feet. I open the door to my room, about to take out my phone, when I suddenly step on something round. <gasps> what's round and would be on the floor? Watermelon! My breath catches in my throat as I trip, gravity reeling me in. Oh, is this like a bomb volleyball? <laughs> that hurt. I get up clumsily, my phone flew out of my pocket when I tripped and landed on my bed, the screen softly lighting up. I fumble around the wall until I find the light switch. Hello. As soon as the room lights up, I'm greeted by cluttered mess on the floor. Even the books on the bookshelf are haphazardly shoved together. What a disaster. Looks pretty clean to me. I don't know what you're talking about. Speaking of the past few days, I've been thinking about cleaning up my room, but the more I try to organize it, the worse it gets. I find new things every time. The history of heroes, the notes I took on heroes, and the videotapes of All Might. So this is where I put them. All Might is Kachan's and my childhood idol. To this day, we've argued countless times over things about him, and it was usually Kachan who won the argument in the end. Boy, you need to quit talking, quit reminiscing, and go to Kachan's house. Bring some snacks. Someone as clever and confident as Kachan makes whatever stands in front of him feel the compelling difference in their power. Come to think of it, for me to have the guts to stand in front of him, to stop him from bullying other kids, to even lecture him, I was incredibly brave. In retrospect, those weren't happy memories, but thanks to those memories, I am who I am today. This is the thing I just stepped on, right? I should be more careful. I picked it up. Watermelon? The ball is dusty from years of sitting around, the tears in the faded yellow leather exposing the filling inside. It can't be used anymore. Back then, it was Kachan who tried to teach me how to kick a ball. Even as he complained about how useless I was, he still showed me over and over again. Kachan could never understand why I kept failing, and I could never understand how he learned so quickly. At that time, I thought even if we didn't understand each other, we could still make our friendship work, because as long as Kachan was there, I thought I had the courage to catch up to him. <sighs> Are we gonna be here all night? He's gonna look out the window, it's gonna be 6 a.m., and he's gonna be like, dang it, I should've gone over there and fed him many weights. But Kachan left the park in the end, choosing not to take part in my hollow shell of a childhood anymore. When did Kachan lose his patience with me? I pick up my phone and turn it off, my chest feeling heavy. <sighs> I need to eat dinner. <laughs> the shopping district should be closed by now, which means I'll have to buy some cup noodles at the convenience store. Yes! That's always the solution. <laughs> I also need to think about what I'm gonna say to Kacha. Are we gonna run into him on our way to the convenience store? After buying the noodles, I still haven't thought of anything and leave the store dejectedly. <gasps> Sai. Looking at your face, I'm guessing things didn't go too smoothly, eh? God knows I don't remember this guy's voice. <laughs> I freeze. Spinning around, I see a man standing under the streetlight. He's wearing long sleeves with a cap covering his face. Hey, oh, I didn't think Pete would have us meet again so soon. He kind of sounds like Aizawa now. Might have to reconsider that. It's you! That's right. It's the strange man who appeared in front of Kachan and I that day. Ah, uh, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch the first episode and find out what voice I gave this guy. <laughs> oh. Okay, all right. I don't know what I did back then or why, but we're gonna try to reproduce it now. It was kind of like uh, the Mad Hatter from Alice in Wonderland. Calm down. I'm not going to do anything this time. So your friend isn't here, hey? The man says, looking around, watching that man act so casually lights a fire in my chest. You? Hurry up and cancel your quirk so Kachan can go back to normal. Even in the face of my anger, the man is still unmoved. He makes a puzzled expression, shrugging. That's going to be a problem. If it's to help your friend, then sorry, I can't do that. What? Stop playing around. This is your quirk. If you can't remove it, then who can? Do you know how much Kachan has suffered because of you? Hey, hey, hey. <gasps> it's that guy from IQ. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Pitting the blame on me isn't fair. You're the one making your childhood friend suffer, not me. In fact, you're the one who knows that better than anyone else, right? 
The man points at me, taking a few leisurely steps forward. Liking someone isn't a one-way street. Wanting affection without giving it out in the first place. No wonder your childhood friend is so angry. Oh, what? What are you talking about? The man sighs, then as if he just thought of something, knocks on his palm with his other hand. Fine, I'll tell you my quirk. Truth makes other people tell the truth about how they feel. I think someone in the comments on the first episode totally called that. And if it was you, congratulations. <laughs> it only works under certain conditions. The person must have someone they care about. Someone they're almost pining after. <gasps> so it's true. It wasn't just a ruse. He actually likes this guy. Oh my god. But as long as they confess, they untie the knot in their heart. The quirk's effects will disappear naturally. I was surprised when it worked too. It's so good to be young. Wait a minute. I f oh, I finally learned the truth about his quirk. However, I don't feel excited or relieved. Rather, my messy train of thought drives me to interrupt the man's strange and somewhat mocking remark. So you're saying everything can be fixed just by telling the truth? Is that easy? If that's the case, then the effects should have lifted when we were at the hospital. Wait, no. From his reaction, it doesn't seem like the effects were lifted, although I'm not sure. Or does that mean he was lying? But Kachan himself said that's how he really feels. So what's the- Hey, I wasn't lying. Only the person he's binding after can lift the effects of the quirk. Unless you face yourself. The person most important to you will stay stuck like this forever. The man who started everything states nonchalantly. Because the real person who's affected by my quirk isn't your childhood friend. It's you. You've never copped up your true feelings even once. <laughs> it's... It's me. Now that you understand, it shouldn't be long before the effects are lifted. Well, good luck, young man. Oh my goodness. The man pats my stiff shoulders, about to leave. I suddenly have the urge to yell at him to stop. You're not done explaining yet, my mind shouts. However, I feel like there's a spotlight on me, an inescapable feeling of distress that makes my words stick in my throat. The man looks at my hesitant face. <gasps> Isn't that Bakugo? <gasps> oh boy, here he comes. Here comes trouble. The man suddenly points behind me, a look of surprise on his face. What? Catch up. I spin around, but there's nothing except for the streetlights and the dark streets of the night. Ah, I realize he tricked me and turned back, but there's nothing to greet me except for the empty street. He's gone. Just like what happened that day, the last echoes of his words disappear into the wind. Who on earth is that person? I would say he's up to no good, but he doesn't seem to carry the truly evil intentions like the Villain Alliance does. I don't know, he kinda does. A pang of rebellion flares up inside me. I don't want to trust this stranger who acts like everything is a game, but... A quirk that makes whoever its owner touches cough up their true feelings. Truth. Wait, he touched me in the shoulder! Oh no! You know what this means. I clench my phone. The next thing I know, I'm running. What's right? What's wrong? I don't know, nor do I care anymore. I need to go to Kachan's house. I'm gonna tell him how I feel face to face. Oh no! My mind is filled with nothing but Kachan as I race into the night. Still determined after hearing what that man said, I stop abruptly. The park is a children's paradise during the day. They fill the air with their bubbly laughter as they run around and play games. However, when the last of their giggles fade away at dusk, so does the warmth and light that keeps the park alive. What's left is a heavy, forlorn silence. Oh my god, just go tell them how you feel. Quit with this poetic nonsense. I find myself walking towards the park, almost in a trance. It was here. I let my eyes wander around the park. They soon catch sight of an elephant slide from my childhood, which appears a lot smaller than I remember. The sand below my feet is softly carved with the footprints of children having the time of their lives. With every step I take, my childhood memories start to unravel and replay around me. I can almost hear children scuffling, a sound so nostalgic it makes me stop. <gasps> Flashback? Guys, I'm gonna have to stop. I know you hate the cliffhangers. I know you hate them. I could have made it worse though. I could have waited until we were at Kachan's house and then you would have been real mad at me and you know you would have. In the next one, we're gonna see what this flashback's all about. We might go to Kachan's house and confess to him the world is our oyster. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.